happening. It is uh, Gary Byron, 8-11 on this Monday morning, 11 minutes after uh, 8 o'clock. Our next guest into the Daily Connerton Memorial Company interview chair is uh, from Watertown. He's a state senator that represents many other towns ending in Barry, B-U-R-Y, like, oh, let's see, Middlebury, Southbury, Woodbury. Uh, he's... <laughs> Probably a few more in there, too. A good friend of the show and also a personal friend of mine. Let's welcome back State Senator Eric Berthel. Eric, good morning. Hey, good morning, uh, Representative Byron. You don't hear that too much uh, anymore, but uh, once you have the title, you uh, hope people still recognize your service. But this is How true. are you, my friend? Uh, uh, not doing too shabby, I guess, over here. Uh, how is your summer going? My summer has been, um, has been very interesting. Uh, you know, it's... Um, it is the, the 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 quiet summer for legislators, insofar as that we are not on the ballot. You know, we're every other right. every other year, as we know. But you know, I've had some had a couple of things going on personally at home. Uh, those uh, who follow me on uh, Facebook and friends and family who might be listening this morning, I appreciate all of the well wishes and prayers for my dad, who is recovering from uh, from some some uh, illness during the summer. But it's all good. Uh, you know, thank God for. Uh, for great, great medical care and medical science available to us right here in uh, in Connecticut, and uh, and some amazing hands and amazing doctors. Oh, but thank you. Uh, I, thank had no you idea, I had no idea. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, and and I'll tell you, you know, it's been um, it's been a, it's been warm and rainy, and and uh, <laughs> it's just been a summer. It's Connecticut, you know, and yeah. I'm glad that people are getting out and enjoying all that uh, Connecticut has. Uh, to offer in terms of recreation or state parks, uh, I understand, have been at capacity on uh, every day on the nice days. Uh, that, so people are out and about. They're feeling, uh, I think there's some confidence that had been rebuilt. Uh, I'm a little concerned about all we're, all this, this noise we're hearing now about, uh, about Delta variants and whatnot. But it's been a good summer overall, I would say. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm also a uh, realist knowing that is six months from now it'll be February. Oh, geez, <laughs> let's we'll not go. Shoveling snow, you know, or something like that, or, or March or January, whatever it'll be, six months from now. Let's so. not talk about that. Um, exactly. By the way, one one final thing, and and you don't have to answer. It, you just I don't want to get too personal with 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 your dad. I know that's that's something sure. personal. I had no idea, first and foremost. It, is, is it anything to do with COVID related or or no, okay. no, okay. not at all. So okay. I, I, look, I. I uh, no, he uh, he has been dealing with some cardiac issues that um, that were a long time in the making, and he's mm-hmm. a, he's a very healthy he's a very healthy 86 year old man who just had a couple of parts wear out essentially, God and bless him. Uh, and again the, the science and technology uh, that we're able to to stuff that 20 years ago, Gary, had a man or a woman who was 86, they would have said, well, you know, there's probably not a whole lot we can do, and uh, due to amazing science from uh, from doctors right here in Connecticut who invented some of the stuff that my dad has been uh, uh, been able to, uh, to to have applied to him, if you will, and, and treated with. It's just amazing. So, but not COVID. No, uh, thank God for that. And uh, you know, uh, and I and I, I feel my heart goes out to to those who uh, you know we don't see as much as we did last year at this time. But anyone who has lost loved one to COVID, uh, you know, my heart truly breaks for. For all families, uh, we you? saw we had that in our family last uh, in April of twenty. Mm. Uh, I lost my brother-in-law, who was forty-seven oh years old, to, wow. to COVID. So. Young, young. So it's very real. It's touched a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Did but, you get vaccinated? Uh, so I did. I did. I was vaccinated um, about two months ago, and uh, I know that uh, some of your listeners uh, who don't like vaccines probably just went, "Oh, you know," and and that's okay. As you spoke to in your lead in to, to our segment here, it's a very it should be and and needs to remain a very personal thing where that people should not be forced to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that if you want to go and be vaccinated and you feel that that's the right thing, go ahead and do it. But if you don't want to, I, I'm, I'm sickened by the news or something that was on on uh, in the news uh, in the last uh, 48 hours about. Uh, about the majority leader in the Senate calling for a, uh, a mandate for all uh, uh, municipal and state employees to be vaccinated. How do we think that 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 we can we can go and do that? And I was proud, Gary, on April 27th to be one of just a handful of senators that addressed a crowd of more than 5000 people mm-hmm. on the north lawn of the Capitol who were the religious exemption and anti-vax crowd. And you you hit it on the head. This was not as as we've been categorized a bunch of crazy 
uh, 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 Republicans that don't believe in science. It was not that at all. It was quite to the contrary. It's people who are saying this is not a Republican, Democrat, whatever party you want to be thing. This is a matter of uh, of freedom, of yeah. what is uh, what is promised and guaranteed to you by the Bill of Rights of the Constitution of this great nation. And for us to think that we can go and strip people of those rights that are guaranteed to them, okay, that's part of the reason why America is so great is that we have these protections in place. is fundamentally wrong. And I stood with that crowd on the 27th. They were back on closing day on June 9th, a smaller crowd, and I was happy to go out and address them again. This is not a Republican or Democrat thing. This is not whether or not I believe or anyone else right. believes or in science. This is protecting what, freedom. What was and, it for you, Senator? What made you decide to get the vaccination? Was it that the loss know, of a 47-year-old relative, or was it... Uh, no, no. I, and I, I looked at everything that was available. I have a, uh, I have a sibling who has a Ph.D. In, uh, in organic chemistry from an Ivy League school who has worked in the pharmaceutical injury for, uh, in, uh, sure, industry for, uh, for 35 years. We had a long conversation. It's my brother, okay? And, and, and uh, we've had a long conversation. Um, and I got to a point with, uh, I, I got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I got to a point, uh, an understanding from a scientist who worked for two different pharmaceutical companies throughout his career, that I was okay with with uh, with the Johnson and Johnson, and I'm not I'm not throwing a shot at Pfizer or Moderna. It was my personal choice, again, as it should be for every single person. Every single person should be able to make that choice about which vaccine and whether or not they want to get it at all. We shouldn't be mandating and forcing things uh, that 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 people don't necessarily feel comfortable doing. But for me, I got to a comfort level, and uh, and and I made a decision to move forward. It was it was just. Um, uh, that's just where I got to, Gary, in terms of, of, of my thinking. It was not related to having lost my brother-in-law, who was a beautiful, uh, humble man. And, and, you know, I lost two other friends. We lost, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, I lost one other friend to, to COVID who, who lives in New York, another young guy. Um, I don't know if this vaccine uh, actually prevents, or, uh, pre- prevents COVID spread. We're seeing now on the news this morning, People who have the COVID vaccine could give the give the, the the virus to to people who aren't vaccinated, and people can still get it. So who knows? Who knows? And this is why I, I agree a hundred percent with people that say because we don't know, and because we're not sure, and because it was emergency certified or emergency approved, and there hasn't been that long term testing that we see on a lot of other things. I fully respect and will support the right for someone to say, no, I don't feel comfortable doing this right now. What was it, though, that made you decide to get it? I, 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 I mean, you said you, you, you talked to somebody who, your brother, who uh, has a Ph.D. in, in yeah. this chemistry. And there's so many things floating around where there's a chip in there to track you or that there's... Um, it's going to ruin your DNA. It's going, you're not going to be able to have kids. It's, I mean, I've heard all these, you know, really rumors. Um, so, so for me, Gary, the Johnson and Johnson vaccine is different from the other two, as my, my very smart brother explained to me. And it is more like a, a flu vaccine or other vaccines that you get. And I felt that there was a, quite honestly, I felt there was a higher level of safety uh, with that and understanding and that it does not do what the other two vaccines do in terms of uh, whatever it is with this, uh, this, this DNA change and whatnot. It's more of an old fashioned type of vaccine. And I got to a comfort level. It was not an easy decision for me. I hemmed and hawed for a lot of weeks on that. And, and, and I got to a point where I said, okay, uh, if the Johnson and Johnson is truly what, what, uh, my, my brother, who's a doctor, uh, has said, uh, it is, and I think I can I can put a little bit of faith in that and move forward. And what were the what were the uh, side effects? How did you feel afterwards? You know what? It was about uh, I, I had mild flu symptoms for uh, within 24 hours after getting the vaccine, and uh, and after that I was perfectly fine. And it's exactly what the person who gave me the vaccine uh, said would happen. That within eight or ten hours I would start to feel a little under the weather. Had a very mild fever, a little bit of aches and pains, but it was all gone within 24 hours. It was kind of, kind of uh, like when you get a flu shot, not unlike uh, the symptoms of a flu shot. Oh, you see, you felt heard, achy. I mean, you weren't throwing yeah, up. You weren't uh, achy, exactly. No. Okay. All right. You know, but the uh, you know, and I know people have talked about the other two vaccines, and there's you have two doses, and they they've gotten very ill, and it's painful. I experienced none of that with Johnson and Johnson. And again, I'm not a I'm not an advocate or or, or uh, uh, an advertisement for Johnson and Johnson. That was just my 
personal choice sure. after looking sure. at, at all of the information. So, and, and my wife, uh, who's 40, 41, 42 years old, she's, she, um, she had the Johnson and Johnson. She's a school teacher, elementary school. And she was down, she was down for the count for days. including that first day really? right after, Oh my good nauseous. And, and just, just was it, watching her uh, hot and cold and, and yeah, wither yeah. around and, and she just couldn't get comfortable. And, and I, I, I watched her and I, cause I took care of her. Uh, yeah, well, sure, what I could sure. do a lot, I mean, most of it, you, it just has to run its course. There's really not much I can do other than exactly. be there for her exactly. and help her out a little bit. But, um, I felt bad and, and just watching her, I was like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And this was the yeah. Johnson and Johnson, by the way. So, yeah, so it affects it affects a lot of each vaccine affects people differently, clearly, and and this is a great example. My my reaction was very minor. Your wife had a more uh, more uh, a profound reaction to it. So um, it's very interesting. And and again, I think maybe it speaks to how much we really don't know about the science that has gone into these vaccines and how they will uh, how they will affect people.